Available now from Film Movement and Film Media and Something Weird is number five, the fifth volume in the Joseph W. Sarno retrospective series. This contains Moonlighting Wives and The Naked Fog from 1966. These are two Joe Sarno films from the same year. I believe they're consecutive releases or consecutive works by Sarno, Moonlighting and then Naked. And they're early exploitation, sexploitation, I guess, movies. I say early exploitation and sexploitation exist as long as films existed, but these were ones that played in sort of mainstream theaters. I guess Moonlighting Wives played in a lot of mainstream theaters. And this is this is all interesting, okay. So this release is from, uh, as I said, film movement and something weird. Moonlighting Wives, I recently reviewed in another release from Dark, uh, Dark Force Entertainment, so I'm gonna, a little bit I'm gonna compare the two. It's interesting to me to see, it's rare that this happens, where two, once in a while it does in the indie world, two different companies put out the same thing and you know, what are the strengths and weaknesses of each. So Moonlighting Wives, I will recap again. Basically, uh, Tammy Latour, she's the star in common of these two movies. Tammy Latour plays this woman in the suburbs in 1966, Moonlighting Wives, uh, shot in color, and she is, she runs a st stenographic pool, a stenographic service, and she gets an offer from one of her customers one night to maybe walk away from that uh, pad and pencil or, or typewriter and, and do, do service of another kind for better money. And she enjoys it, and she basically turns this stenographic service into a prostitution service. Now, 1966, but and again, you can go back to the beginning of film. There was always nudity and explicit stuff being captured on film. This movie doesn't go there. This movie is, there's a little bit of topless nudity. There's a little bit of nudity in this movie, but really not much. It really plays like an episode of Peyton Place or something. It's very much a melodrama. It's very much... Uh, just about, like they used to say on cable, there'd be an R-rated movie on HBO and it would say rated R for adult themes. And I'd be like, adult themes? Is, is that like doing your taxes? What's adult themes? This is adult themes. This is a lot of, of melodrama and psychological drama and angst about this woman who runs this prostitution service and she brings in this uh, local golf pro to help, uh, help manage the business and it gets complicated and the police find out about it. So part of this is the police trying to figure out what's going on and trying to bust this prostitution ring. And it's just, it's very, dare I say square. It's very square in many ways. And it's interesting, it's, it's very nicely shot, nicely scored. The acting is okay, pretty good to okay. Latour is good in the, uh, the guy who plays Al, the golf pro, he's pretty good. And, but really no familiar faces. One of the biggest strengths of this film is that it was all shot on Long Island, in and around Long Island. So as far as I know, no real sets per se, but actual interiors and, and locations. So you get to see the inside of an old hotel, which, which uh, it was either Long Island or it might've been in the Catskills. There is a Tim Lucas commentary on this version of Moonlighting Wives, and he's great. Tim, if you see a Tim Lucas's name attached to any kind of video release as a supplement, it's always worth listening to what he has to say, even if you don't like the movie. And because he has this wonderful blend of like analysis and film history and uh, filling in the gaps on people's, you know, lives and uh, other works and things like that. So Moonlighting Wives is that. It's, it's a melodrama, it's uh, nicely shot and all that. So this is where I'm gonna compare a little bit, which may or may not be fair to film movement and something weird. So the print that's used on this, it's declared that is the uncut version and restored. The version that is used here, it's got a lot of scratches. I mean, it, it looks sharp and the color looks good, but it doesn't look anywhere near as good as the release by Dark Force Entertainment. I just kept saying out loud while I was watching this, oh my God, this looks so good. I can't believe how good this looks. I don't know what the differences are in the source materials here. I don't know what the differences are in what they use to restore it. Somebody who knows a lot more about this film than I might be very, very strongly in favor of one or the other. I will just say this release of Moonlighting Wives on this disc, it looks like a very sharp something weird transfer. So if you're somebody who knew something weird video in the old days, a lot of the prints they used, it was the only thing they could find, maybe the only prints that existed. So they'd be beat up and dinged up and splicey and all that. And you didn't really mind because it felt like you were watching this movie in a grindhouse or a drive-in after it had been playing, you know, it was third, I like to say, third on the bill at a drive-in 10 years into its life or five years into its life, something like that. So this print, you know, 
it, it's, it doesn't really hurt the enjoyment of watching it. it. It only suffers really to me because I saw that other Dark Forest version that looked so much better. The Dark Forest version has its own set of extras that are completely different from this. So if you're a big fan of Sarno or a big fan of Moonlighting Wives specifically, for some reason, uh, you probably want to have both. So, but we're talking about this one. We're talking about the film movement, something weird video edition of this. So the uh, film, Tim Lucas commentary is great. The uh, transfer is, is very sharp. It just has flaws like an old print of a movie would. And then the second feature on this is called The Naked Fog, which feels like it's made a lot earlier, but it was made after this, but it was Sarno working in black and white, which is what he did before Moonlighting Wives, as far as I know. I'm not, I don't know too much about Sarno. I've only seen a couple of his movies. And I believe for a little stretch after Moonlighting Wives, he went back to black and white. So we have Tammy Latour back again, and she plays a woman who uh, is sort of like a socialite or in the in the elite, or they, the box says she's jet set lifestyle, and she's dissatisfied with that. So she be, decides to become a writer or say that she's a writer and delves into the world of a local uh, brothel again, on Long Island. And she's just kind of hanging out there and maybe sort of participating a little bit. And it's a lot of, again, heavy melodrama. I didn't like this anywhere near as much as Moonlighting Wives. I just thought this was kind of dull, heavy-handed melodrama. But the problem with it wasn't the melodrama. It was more that there were just all these scenes that went on a long time. The scene of a woman in like a, a see-through uh, negligee or something dancing in front of a group of people in a room just went on and on and on. Then you would cut back to it and it would go on and on and on. There's a lot of stuff like that. It shared uh, several cast members in common, whose names, I, sorry, I don't know, with Moonlighting Wives. But to me, it was, it was less interesting. So having said that, I do find these films by Joe Sarno interesting for what they were, for the fact that these played theaters and these were sort of a 42nd Street, maybe sometimes art house, maybe sometimes raincoat crowd film that people would go to see to get, you know, cheap thrills and see adult subject matter. I will say it's adult subject matter handled in an adult manner in that it's not just cheap, dumb, sleazy exploitation. It's, which, I've, which I'm all for, by the way. It's, uh, it's much more intelligent. Like I said, it feels almost like a soap opera. It's a lot about, it's more about the drama than it is the titillation, which, not a lot of filmmakers would do. Radley Metzger would do that, but not a lot of others would do that going down the road that, that this film was on the path to. So again, scenes of Long Island in 1966 and nicely shot in black and white. Scenes, the interior is kind of moodily shot, pretty well shot, but ultimately the, I just didn't feel like there was a lot to this film. Not as good as Moonlighting Wives. And again, I'm not 100% sure about the differences. I did watch both films uh, in full, uh, both versions, I should say, of Moonlighting Wives. And it says that this version, if I do the math, is about seven and a half minutes longer than the previous version that was out there or longer than The Dark Force. I'm, I'm really not sure. I know The Dark Force had extra scenes that were uh, in there as deleted scenes. So either way, it's, inter it's an interesting look. So as for the extras, you have a 2006 interview with uh, Joe Sarno that runs... as. <laughs> So I look at my notes over the over the over the camera here. Uh, seven minutes where he talks about Moonlighting Wives, and then you have a 2007 interview with the cinematographer of the film uh, that has never been released until this, and that is 12 minutes. And he shot both films that are on this disc, so he talks about those a bit and how he got into the business and all that other stuff. So it's pretty interesting. So uh, if you want to see what the packaging looks like, you know, in person, you get the double feature and and. Uh, Pop Cinema or Retro Seduction Cinema or Film Movement has put out a series of these. There's, there, this is the fifth in the series, and I've, I've got a couple of other ones on DVD and Blu-ray that have the same layout for the double feature, if you think that looks familiar. And the back is nothing you're going to be able to read here. And the disc itself is uh, uh, classy and understated, I must say, much like a lot of Joe Sarno films. So available now on Blu-ray from Film Movement, Film Media, and Something Weird is a double feature of Joe Sarno Classics, Moonlighting Wives, and The Naked Fog. Did I say it was on Blu-ray? It's on Blu-ray. Did I say it was available now? Yes, it is.